Hello, children of God! I welcome you to Himang Church Online English Worship. Today is a wonderful day because it's a day to worship God, to praise His name. And so before we're going to listen to the Word of God, let's praise and dance for His glory. Let's go! From the top of my head to my toes I can't keep it all inside I wanna jump with all my mind from the top of my head way way down to my toes I can't keep it all inside I wanna dance with all my Toes. I can't keep it all inside I want to jump with all my might From the top of my head Way, way down to my toes I can't keep it all inside I want to dance with all my might Everybody, everywhere Raise your hand up in the air and say
we continue to worship God, He is here with us. He is watching you and very happy to see you worshiping Him, even just through online. And so this time, may we bow our head, close our eyes, and let's pray. Dear God, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this wonderful time. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this chance to sing praises to your name and to listen to your words. I pray that you will help us understand everything that you want us to say so that our lives will always be pleasing to you. Thank you, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And now, children of God, is our Bible time. So get your Bible with you right now and open it with me in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2. And let's watch this. These are the apostles. Hello. They followed Jesus during his time on earth. Before Jesus went to heaven, he told them to stay in Jerusalem until God sent the gift he promised. See ya! So after Jesus went to heaven, the apostles stayed in Jerusalem along with the other people who believed in Jesus. One day they were all gathered together when there was a sound from heaven like a mighty windstorm. Whoa! Then what looked like flames appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in other languages, and so they started speaking. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, they came running to see what it was. What's going on? When they saw the believers speaking in their own languages, they were shocked and amazed. Hey, they wondered, how can this be? These people are from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages about the wonderful things God has done. What can this mean? Nah, whatever. But others in the crowd didn't believe that it was really a miracle and thought the believers were just acting oddly. Nah. Then Peter stepped forward and shouted to the crowd, Hey, all you! Listen carefully, all you! He told them that they were not acting strangely, but that this was from God. He reminded them that God said this would happen long ago. Then Peter told them about how Jesus was crucified, but then raised to life again, just as God had said he would be. He told them that Jesus was now in heaven and that God had given the Holy Spirit to them as he had promised. Peter's words changed what the people thought and felt, and they asked, Brothers, what should we do? Peter told them, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow! Peter continued to preach to the crowd for a long time, and those who believed what Peter said were baptized. 3,000 people were baptized and added to the church that day. Then all the believers listened to the apostles' teaching and practiced what they taught. Hey! They met together in fellowship, shared meals, and prayed together. They were amazed as the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Here you go. Take this. Ah, oh, thank you. They helped those in need. Here, this is for you. Thank you. Worshiped together at the temple every day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy all while praising God and enjoying each other. And each day, God added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Children of God, before we're going to get into the lesson for today from the book of Acts chapter 2, God sends the Holy Spirit, let me ask you this question. Has there been a time in your life and that you knew that you were getting a gift you really wanted but had to wait for it? Yes, I know, and it's kind of frustrating when you had to wait for something that you are really, really eager to have. 
the apostles, the disciples of Jesus, has received the same promise from Jesus that they will receive the Holy Spirit. And that's the lesson that we're going to get into today. The apostles were obeying Jesus' instructions and were gathered in Jerusalem. It had been 10 days since Jesus had ascended or went up to heaven. On this day, Jews that had traveled from many different countries were gathered in Jerusalem. The Jewish people were gathered to celebrate a feast called Pentecost. This special feast is a time where God's people brought gifts as offering to God. As we can see in the video, the Bible story from the book of Acts chapter 1 to 2, there were a strong wind, violent wind that they can hear. And then in verse 3, the unusual sight happened to them. They saw, seemed like a tongues of fire. And then the believers or the believers were filled with the Holy Spirit. And this Holy Spirit enabled them to speak in other tongues. That is in verse 4 of Acts chapter 2. So God kept His promise and He sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost to help us understand what the Holy Spirit was going to um, what the Holy Spirit was going to do for all the believers. Let's read John chapter 14 verse 26. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Another word for Counselor is teacher. Everybody says teacher. God, the Holy Spirit, would teach believers how to live lives that please God the Father. When the believers read God's Word, the Holy Spirit helps them to understand what they are reading. God speaks to believers through His Word, the Bible. When we memorize God's Word, the Holy Spirit brings it to our minds when we need to remember them. The believers gathered in that room and had experienced an amazing event. God kept His promise and sent them the gift of the Holy Spirit. The noise caused the Jews um, visiting Jerusalem to gather and find out what was going on. So as we can see in Acts chapter 2 verses um, 6 to 7, we can see that they were very curious of what is that sound. This Jewish people that lived in different countries and spoke different languages were so confused. Each one of them could hear the believers from the Galilee speaking their own, very own language. Many in the crowd wanted to know what was happening and wanted to know what this meant. Some in the crowd made fun of the believers and said oh, they were drinking alcohol too much. Like they were drinking wine. So that's why they're like talking like that. Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit and he stood up along with the other 11 disciples or the apostles and he told the crowd that they were not drunk. He said it was only 9 o'clock in the morning. He began to explain to the crowd that God promised to send the Holy Spirit and it happened that very day, the day of Pentecost. Since that time, so many years ago, every person who has believed in the Lord Jesus has received the gift of the Holy Spirit in their hearts. We don't see flames of fire resting on our heads or hear a loud wind noises, but we do receive the power of the Holy Spirit to enable us to live lives that pleases God. 
And now, children of God, let's learn what does the Holy Spirit do in our lives. The Holy Spirit does many things in the lives of all the believers. First one, He is the believer's helper. As we have read already in John chapter 14, verse 26, He indwells believers and seals them until the day of redemption. This indicates that the Holy Spirit's presence in the believers is irreversible. He guards and guarantees the salvation of the ones He indwells in. The Holy Spirit assists the believers in prayer in Jude chapter 1 verse 20 and intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God in Romans chapter 8 verses 26 to 27. Now, the second thing that we'll be learning is that the Holy Spirit also does the work among the unbelievers. As you can see, when they hear the, the loud voice, the, the wind, the, the noise, those people who did not believe in Jesus were so curious and they went in. So Jesus promised that he would send the Holy Spirit. If we're going to see and check, John chapter 16, verse 8, he wants to convict the whole world concerning the sin and righteousness and judgment. And so we can learn that the Spirit testifies of Christ in John chapter 15 verse 26 pointing people to the Lord. Now the third thing that we're going to be learning is that the Holy Spirit has one another important role and that is to give believers wisdom by which we can understand God. The Spirit searches everything even the depths of God. For who knows the person's thoughts except the spirit of that person? According to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 to 11, we can see that only the Holy Spirit can help us understand and comprehend the thought of God. Only the Holy Spirit's work. Since we have been given the amazing gift of God's Spirit inside ourselves, we can comprehend the thoughts of God as revealed in the scripture. The Spirit helps us to understand this is wisdom from God rather than wisdom from men. No amount of human knowledge can ever replace the Holy Spirit's teaching. As we read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 to 13. And so my question today is that, do you live a life that tries to please God? I think this is very important question for you to really um, think and realize if you're really saved. Because a true saved person are the person who really wants to please God. If you have been saved, you will want to do what pleases God. Really, this is true. Believers cannot live lives to please God without the power of the Holy Spirit living inside their hearts. If you ask God to help you live a life that pleases Him, the Holy Spirit will give you the power to do the things you know you never need to do. And so this very day, I want to challenge everyone. As God promised and sent the Holy Spirit to the apostles' lives, he is also giving us the same promise. If you are not sure, if you're not sure today that you have the Holy Spirit, I think it's a time for you to really believe on the promise of Jesus. First, believe on Jesus. Jesus is the only way to heaven. Jesus is our Lord Jesus Christ. He is our salvation. He is our Redeemer. If you believe Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then receive the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. That power of the Holy Spirit will help you live a life that pleases God. Let's all pray. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you're giving us your Holy Spirit so that we will continue to live a life that pleases you. I pray that your children today will just experience the power of your Holy Spirit and they will continue to live having the joy in their hearts that you love them and you save them. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen.